If you have roses that are either mini roses or bare root roses or hedge roses, roses notoriously um, tend to attract aphids. Now, these mini roses that we have coming up will not. But if you have a rose garden like I have in several places of my yard, I learned to put lavender in my rose patch because guess what? The bugs stay away because bugs do not like lavender. Deer do not like lavender because lavender has a beautiful scent that we love and deer do not. Also, ants do not like lavender, so I plant lavender around my peonies. So wherever you have an issue, Maybe it's your vegetable garden, Katie. It's the same deal. Put a little yep. lavender in your veg truck. Put a little lavender in your vegetable garden. You will see far less bugs because bugs, it's, it's almost like a barrier that bugs will not cross. So, and Carolyn, it's that great. applies to you as well. Mosquitoes and other bugs that bother you at night, mm -hmm. people line their patios with lavender because they'll also repel insects for people too. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what you're getting here is a four piece set. And even if you're not worried about the bug factor, they are absolutely beautiful. And don't forget the bonus to lavender is you can snip some of these, bind them together, hang them upside down, let them dry out. And now you've got instant potpourri for all of your little sachets and, um, you know, little gifty things that you want to do for the holidays. So Katie, tell us about these. Well, I am so excited to bring you these because, first of all, I'm a huge lavender junkie. I have this all over my garden, mm -hmm. and this one just came out last year. So we were the first to bring it to QVC last year. You guys might have grabbed some. You probably will get more because this is better than any other lavender on the market. have to be honest, I did pick up some lavender last year also at one of our big box retailers, and okay. it's gone. It did not continue through the winter. These guys still in some zones, so here in Pennsylvania, which we're about on the cusp six, seven, the foliage stays evergreen all winter long. So that's gonna be the beautiful thing. The flowers will die back or you'll cut them to bring them indoors. But this flower is called Sensational. So it's by a breeder who, who is here in Pennsylvania. So it is American bred, American grown lavender, and it is better than the lavender you've grown before because the blooms, look at this size. I, I mean, know. The purple Incredible. color on those. <laughs> they're three to four times the size of your traditional lavender. So that's great. Yeah, right? You're going to get bigger blooms, which means more pollinators get to come to your flowers, more color, but it also means more fragrance. And then you can cut them like you see here in this picture and you have even more of those beautiful blooms to bring indoors. Yeah, uh, you know, and I want to say too, you do get bigger blooms. There's a lot of lavender that's, I mean, all of it's pretty and all of it smells good, but sometimes there's just like an itty bitty bunch of flowers on the end of a big long green stalk. And depending on the type of lavender that you get, there's English lavender, there's French lavender, there's all, right. but American bred lavender is bred to do well in our climate here in North America. And so they do better. You get bigger blooms. This is what you're getting. So again, they don't do dinky there at Cottage Farms. You're getting four of these. These are ready to go. And you know, again, just to uh, pop this out of the pot real quick, um, healthy root system on the bottom. And you don't need to dig a ginormous hole because you know, just a hole that's about twice as big as this is all you need to dig for these to spread out and grow well. And again, they do stay, they're like an evergreen. They do stay green after everything else is kind of dormant, right? Yes, I have the, some, I've got a purple garden, of course. Again, back to my five-year-old and my seven-year-old who love purple. We have an entirely purple garden. Allium and, and lavender is a big part of it. And so right now, the only thing in that garden are these beautiful silvery leaves, which mm -hmm. by the way, have a scent. A lot of people don't realize that both the flower here and the foliage of the leaves mm -hmm. are scented and edible. So you're able to use this plant. It's not just, I call it a triple threat, but it's really like a quadruple threat. There are so many things you can do with it. First of all, how great does the studio smell right now? All right, hold on. Um, I'm doing my normal moving of everything around on the oh, set. Getting some oh, well, and I don't know it. what happened to that butterfly bush, but I'm telling you, you guys, if you are creating a pollinator garden, again, must have. Put this, butterflies love the color blue. How hard is it to find blue flowers? There are not that many out there. 
So uh, again, uh, attracting butterflies, honeybees, they'll be buzzing all around this like crazy. Oh, honey, thank you. You should have had somebody helping you with that. All right, let's put this right over here. All right, so Katie, here we go. So here's your butterfly bush. And then this, I think, would go in the front. That's right, because remember, our butterfly bush will eventually get about four to five so, feet tall and wide. Our so look how great. Look how great that looks together. Oh, and that's beautiful. You're going to, have, and of course, you can put your sun patients anywhere you want. But um, I mean, I think that if you're doing a pollinator garden, these two things right here will attract your butterflies. And, you know, maybe you're going to be doing some of the um, Asclepius to attract the monarchs, which I think is a great idea, too. Those can go right in here, as well as, I don't know, your salvia. I always put some phlox. Um, yep. And I've Having got mint. two kind of, you know, butterfly plant uh, garden areas. Uh, start with your butterfly bush and add things like your lavender. But don't forget, the lavender needs to go with your roses, needs to go with your vegetables, needs to go with your peonies. Just sprinkle it in and you'll see the pests are just like not around. And it also, we should mention, needs to go in full sun. Lavender loves full yes. sun. And it also does not like wet. I know a lot of you have told me you cannot grow lavender. And I say, please try again because it will become your favorite plant. Maybe you're just overwatering, or maybe it's in an area where either you have clay soil or soil that doesn't drain that well. Try it in a pot. Make sure you have a big drainage hole in the bottom. Water it just once every couple, maybe once a week. Mm -hmm. Check it. Depends on where you live and what kind of rain you get. But these only get to be about two feet tall, so they work great in containers. And I really urge you this new breeding technology. These are easier easier to grow they'll perform for you so if yeah. you have been burned by lavender before try this one yeah these are bred to grow well in the united states area north That's america right. so and everything katie just said is right here in your growing guide they like full sun they're going to be great in zones five through nine they're a perennial they come back every year um, this is you plant them 12 inches apart so follow the steps in your growing guide you will have success Everything needs to be watered when it's a new plant. I just can't emphasize that enough. Even the daylilies, you need to water things, you guys. Add that Cottage Farms fertilizer every couple of weeks, and you're going to get great results. All right, we're very busy on the lines. The lavender was very popular.